Hello again, gamers. Welcome back to the Board Game Captain. I'm the Board Game Captain. I'm Lynn. I'm Juliana. And today we're going to be reviewing and showing you how to play and talking about Everdell. Now, Everdell is a game by James A. Wilson and was published by Starling Games. Everdell is a game for one to four players, ages 13 and up, for 40 to 80 minutes, and it is a worker placement and kind of like a uh, village building game, sort of. Um, so we're going to start there. We're going to talk about about the uh, the number of players, the age recommendation. Tableau building. Tableau building. Yes. A little bit, yeah. It, it it it's sort of like village, like city building, but usually with city building, the the cards affect each other for the ones that are next to each other, and this one they kind of don't. So it is kind of a little more tableau building. It's probably a good uh, point. Now for the one to four players, we've been playing it. We haven't. You haven't tried it solo yet, have you? No. Okay, and I know you haven't. No. Okay, but we have played it at two, three, and four players, and I can tell you that the only difference really is there's some spots that aren't available unless you're using four players, which is just makes sense, and the length of the game. The more players, the longer the game, but it's really not that long a game. The 40 to 80 minutes is a good range. It's a good estimate. Probably about 40 minutes for a two-player game, 80 minutes for a four-player game, but... Usually, I'd say, like, our three-player games are around, like, what, an hour, an hour and ten? Yeah, yeah, around that. Yeah. So, and the 13 and up, I don't know. What do you guys think on that? On the 13 and up for a recommendation for age on this one? What are your opinions? Uh, I think it's a little... I think a younger person could do it. Just they might not have the... Um, the mental acuity. The, the, yeah, they might not be able to, for like optimization mm. of because there are, are certain cards that work with other cards. The chaining but, effects. But yes. I mean, even though they say like it has the cards on the critter cards, like mm -hmm. what the what is what are they the buildings constructions? Mm -hmm. it, it says like what cards work well together. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it, there, there, there is, a, there is a level. I, I mean, I, th I think someone who's younger. I think you're right. Someone who's younger could get this game, but I'm not sure. It's kind of like with chess. You can teach a, a, a six year old the moves of chess, but they're not going to get planning ahead and, and yeah. playing it. So I'm not sure if I would personally. I'm not sure I would go with a recommendation much younger than 13. Actually, maybe 12, uh, because you know you want to be at least old enough to get the chaining of effects. I think. What do you think, Juliana? What's your opinion? I also think that it really depends on, you know, how much patience the person has, the mm. younger person. Yes. Because for me, the first time I played, it took a while for me to grasp all of the effects and all of the different things that I was doing. And, and I'm, you know, not 13. So right. I feel like um, if the person is, if the child is willing to, like, really learn and... Mm -hmm. um, knows how to plan ahead like we were just talking mm -hmm. about i think that they'd be able be to fine. grasp this game, grasp this game and have a good time all right so we're gonna open this up and show some of the components that come in here now i want to have a, a quick disclaimer this is the collector's edition we picked this up at gen con and we got the collector's edition so some of these components in here are um uh upgraded upgraded yes that's the word i was looking for upgraded components <laughs> yes i don't know why i can't think of the word upgraded <laughs> But, um, so we've got the rule book. Now, this is the same rule book you're going to get in the basic edition. Now, the rule book is great. Um, this is a top-notch rule book. It's got tons of illustrations and diagrams. Shows you the full setup. Shows you where to put everything, how everything works. Um, really thorough. This is, this is exactly what I personally want in a rule book. Plus it has those lovely illustrations and the art style of this game as well as um, the production is, is really, really good. And the, the total, not, not including the alternate play modes like solo play and everything, uh, it's 14 pages with lots of full page diagrams. So, I mean, it took me only about 15 minutes, I think, to read the rules and I was ready to teach people how to right. play this game. So it was really well done rules. Next, we've got the cardboard punch-out um, 
tree, which gets assembled, and you'll see it out on the table when we're showing you how to play. There's lots of pieces for it. This is, okay, I'm of two minds on these, these sort of pieces. So the cardboard punch-out tree looks amazing out on the tabletop. It's, a, it's an eye-getter. It's an attention-getter. We were walking around Gen Con after we had bought it, and we saw all these people playing it. And you immediately noticed. You're like, oh, my God. They're playing Everdell <laughs> over there. Look at that. You can see the tree. Mm -hmm. For that, it's amazing. It's not really necessary. <laughs> but it's awesome. So, I mean, I, I, but it's I did. It's cute. It's cute. It adds yes. to the whole, you know, it immerses you into the game. The ambiance. Yes. Yeah. But you know what, also, and, and the, the board, again, with that ambiance, great word. So, with the ambiance, the board is shaped like a lily pad. And something I want to point out here, all of the cardboard punch-out pieces in here, and the board, um, to a lesser degree, but it is, they're all linen finish. They have a linen finish. I mean, that was so unnecessary, you're but like it's so, beautiful. You're so obsessed with linen finish. I love it. It feels so nice. <laughs> no, I mean, it, I like it, 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 it just really feels quality. The, the production on this is super high quality. Mm -hmm. Now, the normal edition, everything resource-wise is punch-out cardboard pieces. These are some punch-out cardboard pieces for the game itself. But uh, we got the special edition. So we have metal coins instead of the cardboard punch-out pieces for points, we have these rubber berries, which are squishy and feel like actual berries. They're amazing. We have these twigs, which I'll get to when we're talking about the review. Is one of my minor complaints about the collector's edition, but it is minor. We have these like plastic pebbles. They really do look like little gray river stones, which is exactly what they're supposed to be. And these nice orange plastic gems. Resin. They're they, oh yes, but they are they represent resin. Right. Now, all of these are so extra. They're really cool. Um, and these are the main thing that's upgraded for the collector's edition. The main edi uh, regular edition would just have cardboard punch-out chits for all of these, which would be fine. Because the cardboard punch-out pieces of this game are actually really nice as well. It comes with lots of nice, big, chunky wooden pieces and all sorts of different forms of animals for you to represent your workers. We have... Uh, for instance, this is a, a, a turtle here. That other one, I'm pretty sure it's like it's a, a kit mouse. fox. Is it a That's mouse? A, looks like a mouse. That's a no. rabbit. Isn't? It... He's got a long tail. A, it looks like a mouse. It's a mouse. Yeah, he's got to be a mouse because they're all really little critters. Um, and then we've got the cards. Now we've got tons of cards. You've got little cards for like extra spaces and also objectives, and you have bigger cards, which you're going to see mostly out when we're showing you how to play this game. But again, the number one thing I have to say about these cards is. Quality. Mm -hmm. the, the illustrations are amazing. The backs of the cards, are, the illustration there is really amazing. And they're all linen finish again. I mean, just feel those. They're just so nice. These shuffle so well with the linen finish. They, they... I actually don't like how linen finish cards shuffle. <gasps> the horror. <laughs> blasphemy. Well, that's everything that basically comes in the box. So I think we're going to head over and we're going to show you how to play this game. And then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about how this game feels. And we're going to review it and rate it. Okay, so here we can see a game set up for three players for playing Everdell. Now, in order to set up the game, the first thing you have to do is you have to put out the board, which is this giant, awesome-looking lily pad that you put in the middle of the table. You have to build your Ever Tree over here on the edge of the board. Uh, and this is really cool. It makes this three-dimensional platform that you put workers on the top, and you wind up putting these objective cards on the middle area here. Uh, so then the special... Uh, they call them special event cards. You shuffle them up and deal four out. These are randomized for the different games and they're put out here. The rest are put back in the box. You take two of your own workers of what animal and color you want. In this case, I am playing the squirrels. Lynn will be playing the turtles. And Juliana will be playing the hedgehogs. You then each put one of your workers in the prepare for spring area, one in the prepare for summer area, and two in the prepare for autumn area. You also put out the four stages standard events down here, and all of the resources along the river being the berries, the pebbles, the resin, and the twigs. You also shuffle up the forest cards and deal four random ones for this game. The rest will not be needed and are put back in the box, similar to the special event cards. But these are extra spaces that you can play on, which keep the game varied, interesting, and different. You shuffle up the deck and deal eight cards out into the meadow, and then after figuring out who goes first, you deal 
five cards to the first player, six cards to the second player, seven cards to the third player, and if you're playing with a fourth player, they actually get eight cards. But for this example, we're going to be doing a three-player game of Everdell. So we've decided that Lynn is going first, and now on her turn and all of our following turns, there are three possible actions we can do. The actions are very simple in this. It's either place a worker on a spot and do what the, what the spot says. It's play a card, and in the case of a structure like this farm here, the cost of the farm is listed there in the resources. This farm costs two twigs and one resin, and you can play it into your village. Your village may hold up to 15 cards. But in the case of a critter, critters usually have two possible ways to play them. Like this doctor here can be played for four berries, or he can be played by occupying a university. Now to do that, you just, if you already have a university in your village, you place an occupation marker on it, and then you get to play that critter for free. And, and chaining cards to play them for free is a big part of this game, and it's very important. It's very good to try to get the, the structure and then the critter that's associated with that structure because you get such a big discount doing it that way. Again, you can only ever have 15 total cards in when your When you're playing village. a card, you can either play a card from your hand or from the meadow. It is your choice. So everyone can play these eight cards that are out there. If at any time you play a card from the meadow, when you're done, you will replace it from the deck. If you're ever instructed to draw cards from the meadow instead of the deck for some reason, you draw all the cards you would draw from the meadow and then you replace them all from the deck. So without any further ado, we're just going to get into it. Lynn is going to be taking the first turn. Lynn, what are you going to do for your first action? I'm going to play on this spot and get one twig one resin and one berry. That is a fantastic spot. So that was uh, one whiskey, one scotch, and one beer? Oh, I'm no one, one twig, one resin, one berry, Ryan, Ryan. So uh, now that Lynn is done, I'm going to, let's see here, I'm going to play, let's see, I've got, one, I've got six cards, I can hold up to eight. Eight is the maximum hand size, and that is very important to remember. So I am going to play on this spot here. Now, these cards have two spots, but the second one is only open when you have four players. So being that we're playing three players, it's now blocked off. I was the only one who was able to play there. And that spot is worth two resin and one twig, which I will now take, at which point I am finished. All right. I am actually going to use this space over here that says I can discard any number of cards from my hand and for every two cards I discard, I get to gain any one resource. That's a fantastic space. And because this circle is partially open on the bottom, it's a big circle that's partially open, any number of people can play there. You can even play multiple of your own workers there within a same, same round before uh, recalling your workers to prepare for the next season. Spots are like that are all over the board. This one also can play any number of people there as well as that one there. So I'm so actually going to go ahead and discard six cards to gain three resources. Wow. And I am going to take a pebble, a resin, and another pebble. Oh, wow. Well, the pebbles are the hardest ones to get, definitely. They're the, the most valuable resource for sure in this game. I am going to get two twigs and a card. Mm. I'm going to play here, and that gives me three twigs. Okay, I am going to play here, which gives me one resin and one card that I draw from here. Okay, I'm going to play the farm and mm. cost two twigs and a resin. Indeed. I am also going to play a farm costing two twigs and a resin, but I'm playing the one from the meadow here. So I take this one out of the meadow. I'm going to place it in my village over here, and then I will replace it. And the new card in the meadow that anyone can play is the husband. Look at that. Oh. Perfect timing. Yeah, I was going to say, he can be played by occupying a farm. And we uh, we forgot, I forgot here, for playing the farm, I get a berry, which I'm going to take from here. Lynn, did you take your berry for your farm? I did not. Oh, take it now. Okay. And now it is Juliana's turn. Okay. I am going to go ahead and build this gazette here for two pebbles and two resin. Oh, nice. 
Um, that's worth three points. Now, what does the Gazette do? So it says that I can place one coin, which is equivalent to a point, each time I achieve an event. Oh, nice. And then if there are at least three coins here at the end of the game, I can gain three more victory points. Very nice. That's really cool. All right. And then I'm going to... So the coins are not worth points while they're on the Gazette, but if it has at least three, it's worth an extra three victory points. So it's kind of an interesting kind of saving up for bonus points at the end of the game thing. That is really cool. I'm going to occupy my farm. Okay. I take one of these little... Occupy markers. It's like a little hobbit door. It does look like a hobbit door, and yes. I'm going to put it on the farm, and I actually have a husband in my hand that ah. I'm going to... Really Add to your village. Yes. Leave the other I'm, husband for Josh. <laughs> I'm going to occupy the farm and take the other husband into the farm. Now, he has an ability, but the husband's ability, while it's really good, it only works if you also have a wife. This is a bit of a set collecting uh, character that you need to have lots of stuff going on to be able to get him. And out comes the fairgrounds. All right. I have nothing else to do this turn, so I'm going to prepare for spring. And I take my workers back. I grab a new worker. I activate any green abilities I have, but I do not have any. Mm -hmm. And that is the end of my turn. I'm going to... I'm going to pay two berries to bring out the ranger who lets me move one of my deployed workers to a new location and use that location. Oh, very cool. So I'm going to move this guy, and I'm going to move over to the two resin spot. Oh, nicely done, nicely done. So I'm going, I'm looking around here and I don't really have anything I can do. So I am also now going to prepare for spring, which means I get my extra squirrel worker here and I get back my two squirrel workers from there. I get to activate my farm, which gives me another berry because act, uh, preparing for spring and autumn lets you activate all your green spaces. So there you go. All right, and it is my turn. So I am going to Go ahead and do the two resin and one twig, because that is a hot commodity. <laughs> it is. That's a great space. Fantastic space. Okay, I'm going to prepare for spring. Uh, I get a berry from my farm, and that's it. Okay, so I am going to... I'm going to spend two berries to play the wife, which means I got the full set. I have the farmer and the wife. They now It now means that the wife is worth an extra three points, and the farmer has the green ability that will happen again during the autumn of giving me one resource of any type if I have a wife and a farm. And in addition, they take up only one space in my city, which means it's not three of the 15 spaces taken up right now, it's only two. And that only cost me two more berries there. You said farmer instead of husband. Oh, husband and wife. I, I was thinking like farmer and his wife. I guess I did that wrong. Well, the woman might be the, the wife might be the farmer. That's a fair point. Yeah. They both look like farmers. Maybe they're both farmers. I think they're both farmers. It's very equal opportunity in that regard. They're both farmers. Love it. All right. I think they're berry farmers. They're doing a lot of harvesting of berries. Well, that is the only thing that you can really farm here, so... That is fair. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take the three cards and one pebble because I am running low on cards. Two, three. I am... I'm going to go over here and just get a pebble. I'm going to go... Let's see... I'm going to go to this space here that allows me to discard any number of cards. And for every card I discard, it will allow me to draw two more. So I'm going to discard one, two. I'm going to discard two cards to let me draw four more cards. There we go. All right. I am going to go ahead and build my mine. 
um, which allows me to gain one pebble when it's constructed and then also at the beginning of spring and the beginning of autumn I gain another pebble. So I will pay the resin, the pebble, and the twig and then take my pebble as payment. Very good. I'm going to pay one twig, two resins, and and a pebble to build the fairgrounds from the meadow. Uh, the immediate effect is I draw two cards. Do I draw that before or after? Uh, it is, uh, I believe you replace it first. Okay. So, ooh, the king. And then I draw two cards because that is the ability of the fairgrounds. Very nice. So I am going to pay two twigs and a resin to build another farm, which gets me yet another berry. Stocking up on farms over there. I really am. I really, really is, am. Is this because you couldn't get any farms last game? It is. A little bit. A <laughs> little bit. All right. I'm going to build the crane, which costs me one pebble. And it says that when I play a construction, I can discard the crane from my city to play that construction for three fewer resources. Um, I am going to play over here for a twig, a resin, and a berry. It's a very good place to play. Lots of good stuff available for doing that, so. I'm going to play here for three twigs. Okay, I am going to play on this nice little spot for two cards and, and a, a point. point. Which are points represented by the nice uh, gold coins we have in our collector's edition here. I'm going to play here, discard two, two cards, and gain a stone. Nice. I'm going to play here and gain two resin. I'm actually going to prepare for summer because mm -hmm. I have nothing else to do. So I'm going to take back my workers, take my additional worker, and then I get to draw two cards. Oh, and don't forget this worker here. Oh, yeah. that's. And important. you get to draw two cards from the meadow, which is pretty yes. awesome. So, so who are you going to take? I am going to take the courthouse. Okay. And specifically because he's so cute the scrubble champion okay because <laughs> look at this cute little guy <laughs> oh he's great and he is a, he has a good effect too for he does points. yeah he really is so you replace the two out there oh there's another husband and this is this is how we play a game of everdell so you you do a lot of worker placement as you go on through the seasons you gain more of the uh, the different cards that you gain to be able to use their effects. Some cards have an effect that you just play once, but the green cards have an effect that not only do they happen when you play them, they happen again when you prepare for spring and again one more time when you prepare for autumn. So building up a lot of those can chain effects. And there's a lot of times where you get cards where multiple effects happen if you play a critter or if you play a, uh, a structure. The blue scroll cards also sometimes have effects that allow you to, to, to do also cool things continually throughout the game as well. And the purple cards have effects that allow you to chain points at the end of the game. A lot of, a lot of them will be worth points for however many of a unique character, for instance, that you have in your village. And at the end of the game, after you've everyone has prepared for autumn and we're in autumn, when you run out of things to do, you're going to pass and when everyone has passed, you add up all your points for all the things you have in your village, plus any coins you have earned or any goals you have gotten. And whoever has the most points wins the game of Everdell. So let's head back over to the table. We're going to talk about how this game feels. We're going to talk about how it plays. And we're going to rate it and review it. Okay, welcome back. So that was how you play a game of Everdell. Now, um, we just played another game of this today before 
before doing the video because mm -hmm. we wanted to refresh our memories. It had been a couple weeks since our last game of this, but we've played about maybe about half a dozen games total between the two of us, and you've played at least four, right? Yeah. So now, okay, this game at its core, the main thing is it's, it's a worker placement game. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of worker placement games out there. So my first question to you guys is, is, is this different enough from other worker placement games in your opinions that it's worth still adding to your collection? I would say yes, because it's almost like a worker placement plus game. Because mm, yes. there are turns that you're going to take where you don't place a worker. That's true, because you play cards. So that's why I... I think worker play. I just came up with that. Worker right placement now. plus. Yeah. <laughs> Off the top of the head. So, what do you think, Julianne? What's your opinion? I absolutely love this game. Mm -hmm. I love worker placements in general, mm -hmm. and I think this game is different enough. Um, mm -hmm. There are different components, um, different game aspects, and the fact that it's an ever-changing game with all the different um, cards that you place on the edge of the board, the different objectives, um, and also the theming is just one of my favorites. Things now, about it. So. I wanted to get your guys' opinions before I before I did because I was going to rave about it. Okay. But uh, you guys kind of already did it for me a little bit. You were both like, <laughs> "Yes, this is this is definitely worth keeping to the collection." Mm -hmm. I thoroughly agree. I think it brings enough that's not typical in worker placements. Yes. To to warrant an addition, even if Absolutely. you have a lot of worker now, placement games. There's a bunch of like small things, like the way you get slowly get more workers over the seasons. But the big thing to me is the chaining of the abilities in the little bit of... It, they, it's not really village building. It's more like you said earlier. You tableau said building. Tableau building. Mm -hmm. Because usually in village building or city building, where the cards are in your village is very important because they will affect cards that are adjacent to them. And this mm -hmm. really doesn't do yeah, that. Yeah, you can move them around. Yeah, it's not important. You... It's just you have to have 15 total. Yeah. yeah. Is your max. And you can move them around. It doesn't matter where they are. Mm -hmm. But... The abilities, because there's somewhere like, I've had ones where it says, um, I had a, I had a game one time where I had the, um, I think he's the historian, who says every time you play a, um, either a critter or a structure, you draw a card. And I got him super early, so I, I never needed to play anywhere to draw cards because I was constantly just cycling cards. And then there was one game where I had him early and managed to get something else out where it was like another effect every time you played a critter. So I was like chaining effects. I was like, okay, so I play a critter, I draw a card, and then I do this, and I get and I get free resource, and I, you know, and and when Might you have been the shopkeeper where you get a berry when you yes, that's it, you get a berry. Critter. So now when when you get to do that, it feels very much like engine building to me. Mm -hmm. In addition to the town below building, because you're building this engine of like, well, I do this one action. But I get all these effects. Well, and you're also planning for, you know, spring and autumn yes. where all of your green cards do have that effect. So then you are going to get to yes. have all those things. The different classifications of cards. So you've got you've got the the tan cards, which they you, you play them and they're a one use. They can have a really good use, but they're never coming up again. Yes. You play the green cards. They, they happen when you use them. And if you haven't done the prep for either spring or autumn yet, when those happen, they affect they activate again. Right. You have the purple cards, which give can give all sorts of cool um, extra points. Extra points, which is very much based on what you've put in your village. Mm -hmm. So, like some, like if you, for instance, if you have one that says one extra point for every common um, construction. construction, then you're trying to fill your village with common construction and get tons of points. Uh, and then there's the blue ones, which also have continuing effects. I find that not point wise, but but chaining wise the blue cards and the green ones because of how their effects uh the blue ones are constant and the green ones happen at least twice usually yeah. sometimes three times those become so important for getting the big chaining effects going though for winning the uh once you get good chaining effects going those purple ones are really huge for getting the points oh yeah um and also something else i wanted to bring up the the variety in this game so you've got the four extra spaces in the forest, which are randomized. Mm -hmm. And in addition, you have four standard goals, which are just like have three of this type of card in your village or have uh, two of this type of card in your village or whatever it might be. But then you have four extra goals, which again are randomized and are different every game. Every game I've played of this feels really different enough because of those 
eight different things in every game. Four different goals in four different spaces. That really yeah. keeps and it buried. And there's also, remember that some of the cards that you play in your own village will have spaces on them too. Right. Which can be really, like, because there's, there's that one that says copy an effect of someone else's village mm -hmm. or another space on the board or lots of cool things. Yeah, and there are some cards that you play that only you can use. Yes. Like in your village. And then there are some that other people can play. The open cards. The open cards the person who played them still gets an effect when someone plays on them. Sometimes. Not Sometimes. always. There's somewhere you just steal the effect. Right. But, like, some, yeah, but... some there's that uh, added bonus. Okay. So there, there's a lot going on in this. I would say this is one of the more... Uh, it's not It's not that it's advanced. The, the mechanics of the game are not super complicated, but there's a lot of mechanics to choose from. And sometimes you can forget. Like there, there have been games where we've been playing and someone goes and uses a space and you're like, oh, I forgot that was there. <laughs> Because <laughs> there's so much to keep track of, but overall, I would say this game is great. This is this is tons of fun. Who wants to go first on the rating? What do you guys think? I feel like you want to go first. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. I will go first. Um, I've been I've been going back and forth on this one a bit. Uh, I I've, I've thought a lot on it, and okay. Oh, well, first off, let, let me start with I have one complaint about the collector's edition. Uh, and that is the Twix. We had kind of said that we were going to get back to that. I, I didn't think to do it till now. So the twigs are round and they roll around and they're a little bit of a pain. Other than that, if you have the chance to get the collector's edition over the regular edition and it's not going to break the bank for you, it's not going to be a problem financially for you, I highly recommend you do it. The collector's edition is awesome. The metal coins, the rubber berries, all the components are so cool. But if you can't, but you do have the chance to get the regular edition, it's still awesome. The cardboard pieces are fine. You still have the big three-dimensional tree, which, even though it's not necessary, looks amazing. <laughs> it just looks so cool on the table. I love the look of it. The The artwork of this game is fantastic. The production is off the charts. Mm -hmm. The The gameplay is amazingly fun and varied. The Collector's Edition comes with two free mini expansions, one of which we've already just shuffled in and are using. There's another one of which we're waiting till we start to feel like the game feels a little old, and then we're going to start using that one too because it recommends you hold off on that one a little bit. There's so much in here. There's so much to do. So all in all, um, and this is this is my experience with Everdell, how much I like this game, production, look, artwork, gameplay, everything. This is a 9 out of 10 for me. I'm loving Everdell. My first game, I was like, this is at least an 8. By the time I had my third game, I'm like, this is a 9. This is a 9 out of 10 stars. I love Everdell. Who wants to go second? <laughs> I'll go. For me, it's an 8 out of 10. That's still pretty high. Yeah, I, I like it. I just sometimes be... Sometimes because there are so many cards mm -hmm. and you just don't... um, You just don't get the combinations in your hand and in the meadow to really get going in enough time. Like the second game I played. You had some trouble getting yeah, the, getting I, your engine. I, ne I never, by the time I got going, the game was ending. <laughs> but that being said, you're giving it an eight, which is an amazingly high score. Yeah, That's I, way over a lot of other games I you've still, been like, I like and I'll play any time. I still enjoyed playing it. Um, but what, there is that, that but, issue. But, but you're, what you're just saying, that issue is keeping you back from giving it yeah, a nine. Yeah, yeah. But that being said, an eight is an incredibly high score. Mm -hmm. So you do really like this and I'll play yeah. it anytime. And, and yeah. this is a permanent part of our collection probably. Yeah. If you're giving it an eight, I'm giving it a nine. Okay. So, Juliana. So I've been waffling a little bit because okay. I've been between an eight and a nine this whole time. <laughs> like, and so now I'm like, oh my gosh. Okay. I honestly... You can, you can give it a decimal. 8. Yeah. 5. So I was going to say, I'm thinking an 8.5 because like Lynn, I do have some trouble getting going some games that okay. we play. Um, and I also feel like whenever I'm playing with Josh, he's he seems to just get this like crazy engine, which actually <laughs> is a little bit intimidating. And uh, I just really know, took to the engine building. No, you really, really did. Really and hardcore. that's great. But it's, uh, it's intimidating. Um, and I will say um, the artwork, the theming... Um, I really get into this. I love that it's not like a uh, vicious game. We're not like no. trying to attack each other. Um, a lot of the cards that actually do have a negative effect, we even just kind of like ignore and well, don't There's play. so few of them that right. even if you do play them, it's only like once in a while. Like Lynn one time did that like Rugworth the Robber on me mm -hmm. and she stole my hand, but it was like once... And then, like, I think someone one time played a fool, the fool on someone else. And, like, there's only a few in the entire deck. 
Right. There's not that many negative parts. Most of it, most of it, uh, the only interaction you really have is blocking people from going on spaces or taking cards if they wanted. Yeah, and even like blocking from spaces, there are so many other things that you oh, can yeah. do. So it's just, I don't know. I love this game. Again, would play it anytime, and I'm kind of interested to see, you know, what the expansion that we haven't tried yet is like. Um, it looks really. It's it's interesting. It's more unique uh, structures it's like and characters. Legendary yeah. creatures yeah. and basically they, you shuffle it up and you get half your starting hand okay. gets to be them and there's like super special cards. Yeah, that I'm curious to awesome. see how they, they go. Oh yeah, I want to try I, that. I definitely feel like this game is one that I would play anytime. It's one that I would love in my collection and I definitely recommend it to anyone who really likes worker placement or. Honestly, just having a fun time. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is a great game, that game. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. I have yet to have this go over poorly with anybody. Um, Alex isn't here today for this review, but he played it with us and he loved it, too. He sends two thumbs up from him as well. But this is, I mean, this is a, a big positive review. So this is 8, 8.5 and 9 stars, respectively. Nobody gave this, none of us gave this game less than eight stars. We've all been really liking it. So far, I would say that of the games I tried this year at Gen Con, from Gen Con, this is one of the best. This game is really good. So there you have it. it have you played Everdell yet? Do you have a different opinion? Feel free to put it in the comments down below. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, either on the game of Everdell or on this video, also put them in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, and you'd like to see us do more like it, be sure to give this video a like, share it on all forms of social media, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Board Game Captain, that's Captain spelled with a K on YouTube, and until next time, Game, game On! on.